been 22 years since Halo Combat Evolved first released to the very first Xbox back in 2001. The following years, Halo established itself as one of the greatest video game franchises. And in 2011, when the creators of Halo no longer wanted to make the games anymore, a new studio called 343 Industries would take over. Eventually releasing one of the biggest pieces of garbage games that I've ever played in my life. In this video, I will be ranking all 100 levels or missions from every Halo game. Each game having somewhere between 10 to 15. I don't even know if they have levels, but I will not be including Halo Wars or Halo Wars 2 because I haven't played them. I'm not that smart for strategy games. I like to shoot things in the face like normal first person shooter games. Also, I played all games available on Master Chief Collection, meaning Halo 1 and 2 are both remastered. I don't know why that would matter to anything, but let's get into it. Number 100, Mirrodan Station from Halo 5. This one isn't even really a mission. You just walk around and hit like two buttons. That's it. Number 99, Before the Storm from Halo 5. Same as the last one, no challenge. It's just walking around hitting buttons, but at least the Arbiter is in this one. Number 98, Alliance. Also, once again, from Halo 5. I don't know why they did three of these dumb missions where you literally, it just doesn't matter. You just walk around, talk to some people, nothing, there's no combat, it sucks. This one's the best one though because there's this cutscene where the Arbiter just like trash talks Locke because he doesn't like him. And I like that because I don't like him. Number 97, the library from Halo Combat Evolved. This is the first real level on the list because the other ones aren't really like full levels to me. But I really, really hate this level. The game goes from the coolest introduction to the Flood to a level that almost makes you hate them. I could show you a random screenshot from any part of this level. And you could not tell me what part it's from. Because every single room is the same. It's identical. It's like you're running in circles. And of course, every single hallway and room is filled with hundreds and hundreds of flood. It's awful. All while this stupid floating light bulb thing is just humming and laughing. 96 is the epilogue from Halo Reach. The next nine levels, like, they're all cutscenes. Because they're, like, technically levels, I guess. But, uh, they don't really count that much i just wanted to put them ahead of the library just so you know that i hate the library and i would watch these a thousand times than playing that you know this cutscene was an awesome way to connect halo reach and halo combat evolved but at the end of the day it's just a cutscene that we've already seen before in halo combat evolved 95 is prepare to drop from halo 3 odst just like number 96 it was a great way to show where the game takes place with the uh portal from halo 2 with the covenant escaping it also is the first appearance of nathan fillion's character buck who by the way should have been the leader of osiris in halo 5 instead of luke cage number 94 noble actual this level has amazing foreshadowing it reminds you exactly what's going to happen no matter how the game plays out i think that it also does a good job setting up the noble team a team that you will be spending your time with through the game who i'm sure nothing bad will happen to 93 is the epilogue from halo odst and this one has Sergeant Johnson, and that's awesome. Next up is number 92, The Heretic from Halo 2. This level sets up the Arbiter, one of my favorite characters, and the three Prophets, and their weird long neck things. It also shows how much of a problem Master Chief actually is for the Covenant. Number 91 is Halo 3's Arrival. Cortana's voiceover in the beginning will always give me chills. And... Having the Arbiter and Master Chief meet up in the very first cutscene of the game just shows you how good Halo 3 is going to be. Number 90, Halo 4's epilogue. Kind of just Halo 4 Master Chief walking around all big, like, like looking literally like a tank, and then just straight up stripping in front of everyone. But it looks awesome. Number 89, the Halo 4 prologue. Say what you want about Halo 4 and its awful multiplayer and gameplay. But it has some really cool cutscenes. Number 88, the Halo 3 epilogue. This is the last cutscene where it's just a whole level. And it really is just the perfect ending for a perfect game. The ending, the wake me up when you need me part, it had me sitting in silence for like 10 minutes when I first played it. Uh, number 87, the armory from Halo 2. It's kind of just some dude who I've learned's name is Master Guns, helping Master Chief with his armor. Or you, the player, with your controls. But Master Chief drops a fire one-liner, and it makes it all worth it. Tell that to the Covenant. Number 86, Guardians from Halo 5. 
Let me just come out real quick and say that I hate Halo 5. I don't even remember playing half of it, and I just replayed it, like, last week. I just remember seeing Chief at the end and being like, oh, yeah, I forgot he was even in this game. This is also the last level of the entire game, by the way. Number 85 is Recovery from Halo Infinite. On the contrary to Halo 5, I actually really liked Halo Infinite, but this level, you are literally just going from one location to the other. That is the entire mission. Number 84, Cortana from Halo 3. Just like Halo's Combat Evolves, the library, Halo 3 goes from one of the best levels to one of the worst. Cortana, like a lot of Flood levels, has you packed into a small map with waves and waves of the Flood charging at you all the time. It's definitely not as bad as the library, and it has this cute little cutscene in the middle with Cortana and Master Chief. Number 83, Battle of Sunayon from Halo 5. This is just another level with characters that I do not care about and Buck doing things that I do not care about. Number 82, two betrayals from Halo Combat Evolved. Having this level be right after the library makes it feel a lot better than it is, it being a breath of fresh air from the tight corridors and stuff. But in the end, you're just walking backwards through places you've already been. Number 81, shutdown from Halo 4. This is definitely my least favorite level in Halo 4, just because it's just not very fun to play. It has you being able to drive the Pelican for the very first time in a Halo game just to shoot down two easy enemies and then land it and then just do some stupid annoying shutdown thing with a tower all while fighting the most annoying enemies in Halo and then you fly in the Pelican over to the next tower and do the exact same thing. 80. Enemy lines from Halo 5. At this point in the game, if I were Spartan Lock, I would just try and speed run it as fast as I could so I could get to a Master Chief level. That's how much I enjoyed playing this game. Number 79, Genesis, also, once again, from Halo 5. There's this cool part in this level where you run down, like, a building for, like, 20 seconds. That was pretty cool. 78, the sequence from Halo Infinite. Though I think the combat in Halo Infinite is really fun, having to run, fly, or drive to three different towers just to go back to the original place you started was kind of annoying to me. 77 is Forerunner from Halo 4. I love the ending where you had to ride away on the ghost, and the cutscene was pretty interesting, even though that character literally doesn't really go anywhere. But 75% of the level, you are fighting the Prometheans, and the Prometheans are probably the most annoying enemy in Halo ever. They are so aggravating to me. And what makes it even worse is that Halo 4 has this stupid like gun thing where every time you pick up a gun, it's like half empty, because I guess that's more realistic because people are using it. But there is, like, no ammo in any guns, and it's so awful for combat. Number 76 is Respiratory from Halo Infinite. Though I was pretty invested in uh, saving the Pelican pilot who was kidnapped in Command Spire before this, because I, I really liked his character. Uh, and even though I really, really hated how Cortana survived Halo 4 and then turned evil in Halo 5, I thought that was really stupid. I was pretty intrigued by the like flashbacks almost, like the holograms that are showing up in this level. Overall, the rest of the level is kind of bland to me, especially like the gameplay. Also, the new Cortana figures out that she's Cortana by snapping, and that's kind of a little bit weird. I don't know. Number 75 is Kazingo Boulevard from Halo ODST. And while I don't think Halo 3 ODST has any bad levels, some are very forgettable. Kazingo Boulevard is definitely one of those forgettable levels, even though it has you driving a tank. Number 74 is Glass from Halo 5. Those Prometheans from Halo 4 are back, and they are as annoying as ever. And also, there is this AI named Roland, and he's just like saying stuff you're supposed to care about, but I just kind of started laughing. Number 73 is Keys from Combat Evolved. Somewhere in the game, you can find a terminal, or at least a, in the remastered version, and it has some video of captain keys fighting and trying to stop the flood from taking over his brain and it is terrifying and it really it adds to his character and it adds to his death when you find it out later in the level then the actual level master chief kind of just punches his face in and leaves level itself is kind of just truth and reconciliation from earlier in the game but with flood uh number 72 is data hive from halo odst this level is cool at the end because it's the first level where the rookie actually finds someone in his squad, but it's kind of boring. Number 71 is Sacred Icon from Halo 2. I am a huge fan of Halo 2, this being the first non-cutscene level from it on the list, but I think 
that this is definitely the weakest, even though I don't really think it has any bad levels. It's kind of just another annoying flood level. There's a boring map. There's waves of the same old enemies. It's just a normal Halo flood level. Number 70 is Evacuation from Halo 5. It's definitely not as bad as the other Halo 5 ones I've mentioned so far, but it's not very special compared to other Halo levels. You're kind of just climbing stairs. 69 is Exodus from Halo Reach. This is another game I think has no bad levels, this being the first non-cutscene level, but I don't really think this one is like very special. It's kind of forgettable and boring. I like the city background though. Number 68 is Command Spire from Halo Infinite. It's got a cool environment with all the moving blocks and stuff, but it's kind of just a lot of similar hallways and then a boss fight you've already done in the past. Number 67, Osiris from Halo 5. When first playing this, it excited me to see Buck and to learn who the new, these new characters were because they looked awesome in the cutscene. And after finishing the game, you can replay it after forgetting everything that happened just so you can think the same thing. Unfortunately, everything cool from this level was in the cutscene. Number 66 is Floodgate from Halo 3. Like two betrayals in Halo Combat Evolved, it's just walking backwards but with Flood. This one, fortunately, is a lot better. Being a Flood level that is in an actual open area is cool. Also, just the mood of the area is cool. You can see soldiers going crazy in corners yelling. It also helps that the level is very short. Also, the cutscene after the level with the Arbiter and Sergeant Johnson switching weapons was awesome. Number 65, Conservatory from Halo Infinite. The cool cutscene at the end and the moments between Master Chief and Cortana can't really help it from being just another tight, boring hallway level. I think Halo Infinite does its best when it's using its open world map. Number 64 is Nexus from Halo Infinite. The cool flashbacks that happen when you put the energy button thing in the like battery thing, I thought that was pretty cool, like showing old flashbacks. This is also the level where Master Chief is about to delete the new Cortana because it's too much of a danger if the Harbinger gets her. I feel like this makes sense because of how much of a monster that 343 turned Cortana into. It also makes the relationship between the two characters a lot more interesting. Number 63, Tarari Plaza from Halo 3 ODST. It's the first flashback of the game. It, has, it helps like set up what the game is trying to do and it really helps that you're playing as Buck. It makes it a lot more fun. Number 62, The Winter Contingency from Halo Reach. This level helps you fall in love with the characters, especially George, and I love the feel of it. Though nothing really happens except this awesome cutscene where Noble Six and George follow the elite that kidnapped that girl. That was awesome, especially the music. Number 61, The Breaking from Halo 5. This level isn't even good, and uh, I think I only put it this high because I had to play for, as Spartan Locke for hours, and I was finally chief. It literally, it just has you fighting the same guy you've been fighting the entire game. Except this time, there's three of them. Also, Master Chief just get like gets, like, captured by Cortana. I don't know. Master Chief just, like, didn't have a plan in this game somehow. Number 60, Outpost Tremonius from Halo Infinite. Nothing very special happens in this level, just, like, the introduction to the open world, which I love for a Halo game, by the way. It's basically just, like, the silent cartographer, but as a giant island. Number 59, Excavation Site from Halo Infinite. This level is just purely combat. Very good combat, by the way. And it's in the beginning like of the game when the, everything is just so new to you, so it's just so fun. Number 58 is Halo from Halo Combat Evolved. It might be a little controversial to have this so low, but first I just would like to say that I think most of the levels in this list are good, like up to like number 75, I think are good, or good-ish, but on the replay of this game, I don't think it was as exciting as it was the first time. I'm sorry. Number 57 is Oracle from Halo 2. The second half of this level is actually super cool when the whole building is falling after you cut the wire. But it's just like that awfully slow elevator in the beginning just really ruins it. Number 56 is the Pillar of Autumn from Halo Combat Involved. This is the first level of Halo ever and it was the perfect introduction to the series. It throws you right into the middle of this space war with aliens and AI, but it does not compare to what comes in later games. Number 55, Oni Sword Base from Halo Reach. It's nothing special, it's just normal fun Halo, and it's the introduction to Dr. Halsey. Number 54, Oni Alpha Site from Halo 3 ODST. Blowing up the bridge in the beginning was pretty cool, and standing your ground was kind of cool, but it's nothing special. Number 53 is Quarantine Zone from Halo 2. 
Uh, nothing very special happens. It's just fun combat, like a lot of these levels. Number 52 is Uprising from Halo 2. The Arbiter taking revenge on the Brutes is cool, but just like a lot of levels in this middle, middle section, nothing too special happens. Definitely fun, though. Number 51 is Uplish Reserve from Halo 3 ODST. Definitely one of the weaker vehicle levels, but fun. Halfway through at number 50 from Halo 5 is Blue Team. Instead of a 5 minute action packed cutscene like the Oasis team got, all they need to do with Blue Team was show Master Chief doing Master Chief things, and it was equally as cool. Though while the, Oa the Osiris cutscene kind of lost me when it came to the gameplay, I was into the Blue Team. I wanted to learn more about Master Chief's teammates and who they were. That unfortunately was too much to ask for because they were only in the game for like 10 minutes. Also, I just want to say that if you play the game on single player, the AI on all of the teammates in this game are awful. 49 is Nightfall from Halo Reach, and this is just a solid sniper stealth mission. Number 48 is Requiem from Halo 4. Fighting Covenant in a beautiful landscape made me think that Halo was in good hands for a little while. Number 47 is On the Tip of the Spear from Halo Reach. Riding into battle followed by an army of soldiers is amazing. 46 is High Charity from Halo 2. Continuing the fight started in Gravemind, High Charity still has the outstanding Covenant City backdrop. Not as good as Gravemind though, in my opinion, but still good. 45 is NMPD HQ from Halo ODST. The ending was amazing. It was basically unlimited explosive weapons. Spraying banshees attacking from above is cool. Number 44 is unconfirmed from Halo 5. Looking at it now, this should not be this high. Like, I don't understand why it's this high. I think it was the end cutscene. In my head, Master Chief was going easy on him. It could have easily obliterated Spartan Lock at any moment. Something that doesn't make sense to me, though, is at the end of the fight, Spartan Lock, right before he freezes up because of that, like, armor thing, he just takes out a gun and is about to shoot Chief in the face. But that doesn't make any sense because... Earlier in the game, he said that he was only bringing him in because it was his job, and then later tries to talk, like, reason to him, even though he tried to shoot him in the face. That stupid warden guy is also a boss fight in this level. You fight him, like, six other times in the game, though, so it's not very special. 43 is the Spire from Halo Infinite. Cool boss fight, cool cutscene. That's it. 42 is Infinity from Halo 4. I like the jungle in this level, and I really like Lasky, probably one of the better 343 introduced characters. 41 is the Silent Auditorium from Halo Infinite. That one brute with the hammer got me so many times. The last level in Halo Infinite, the end cutscenes with Cortana saying goodbye and Chief saying finish the fight and the Pelican were really cool. The Harbinger was kind of like the side bad guy during the game, and as of 2023, we don't really know any like anything she was talking about, what it means. So her being the main boss fight was kind of weird, but it's good. Number 40 is New Alexandria from Halo Reach. The gameplay in this are super fun, going from vehicle to skyscraper back and forth. Also, cat dying shocked me so much. It was out of nowhere. And for a little bit, you can hear Buck. That's awesome. Number 39 is Swords of San Helios from Halo 5. A Halo 5 level that actually feels like Halo, and you aren't even playing as Master Chief. Also, the Arbiter makes his return, even though... In these levels he doesn't really do anything 38 is pelican down from halo infinite this level is super exciting combat and it just has a really good cutscene showing the human side of master chief 37 is outskirts from halo 2. this is the first halo level showing you earth and its futuristic halo style uh the beginning of the game seems to just have you packed into this small alleyway but that doesn't really ruin it number 36 is coastal highway from halo 3 odst lord that thing's Thanks. Kind of reminds me of like the last level of the game shows a group reuniting and makes me really wish that Halo 5 was about these characters and not the Osiris team. I feel like I'd be happier if Halo 5 was called Halo ODST 2 and you didn't even play as Master Chief at all. This level also has my favorite butt quote. Take my advice, rookie. You ever fall for a woman? Make sure she's got balls. Number 35 is Tsavo Highway from Halo 3. This level isn't very important to the story in any way. You could probably remove it and it wouldn't matter, but it's just a lot of fun in my opinion. Number 34 is Reunion from Halo 5. 
this in my opinion is the best halo 5 level again it could just be because you play master chief after a while of playing like lock the entire time but like swords is saying helios it actually feels like halo which is a lot to ask for from a game called halo but this time you play as a main character of halo also it makes me extremely angry that master chief and the arbiter didn't even see each other this entire game number 33 is the tower from halo infinite this level is pretty cool the death of spartan griffin hits harder if you tried to collect all the info pads around the map and the introduction to the enemy locator thing was cool for the boss fight although i never use it again after number 32 is composer from halo 4 master chief protecting the station except it doesn't work and the people on the station get their faces incinerated protecting the forerunner thing in the mantis was cool too 31 is delta halo from halo 2 Although I put the similar Halo Combat Evolved level pretty low, Delta Halo I liked a lot more. Destroying the Covenant in a Wraith is awesome. Could we possibly make any more noise? I guess so. 30 is the road from Halo Infinite. When that music kicked in while destroying hundreds of Banished, I knew it was a good level. Number 29 is Truth and Reconciliation from Halo Combat Evolved. It's kind of a bit long, but it's cool being on the Covenant ship for the first time. Number 28 is Dawn from Halo 4. It doesn't make much sense that Master Chief's armor looks completely different, but Dawn was a very enjoyable level that got me very excited for Halo 4 when I first played it. It kind of made me mad that we were fighting the Covenant again. At first I thought it ruined the ending of Halo 3, but I would so much rather fight them than the Prometheans, so it's good. Number 27 is Regret from Halo 2. This has an amazing backdrop, amazing cutscenes. All that I have to say is that those snipers have never been more annoying. Also, that Regret fight was so easy, at least on normal difficulty. You just run up above him, jump on him, and punch him in the face five times, and then he dies. That's it. 26 is the package from Halo Reach. The Cortana cutscene was awesome, and the machine gun fight was super fun. Solid level. And now on to top 25. Number 25 is the Arbiter from Halo 2. The first time I played Halo 2, I thought playing the, as the Arbiter was the coolest thing ever. Being able to turn invisible whenever and having a lot more plasma swords. It also helps establish the elites as actual characters and not just something you mindlessly shoot in the face. Number 24 is Kikiwani Station from Halo 3 ODST. This level is just super fun. Just stealing a phantom is the funniest thing ever, dude. It's just so fun having to protect it and stuff in the the Banshee. Number 23 is the foundation from Halo Infinite. Not only did they kind of undo some things from Halo 5, they just straight up killed everyone on the Infinity. And I love that. That's awesome. And in order to fix what they did in Halo 5 with evil Cortana that everyone hated, the in 343 just straight up killed the real Cortana. This would never have happened if they never brought her back after Halo 4 in the first place. But I respect it just because that was like evil Cortana was awful. I also like that Master Chief has another Cortana, just because Master Chief without Cortana is kind of just Doom Slayer. He needs Cortana to like make him feel like an actual person with emotions and not just like a murderous robot guy. Number 22 is Reclaimer from Halo 4. This is one of the Halo 4 missions that really stuck out to me when I first played it. Actually, when I first played it, I actually got this lag where I couldn't see the floor and I was just floating, and the only way to fix it was to restart the entire mission. But that made me super angry, but then I restarted it, and I enjoyed it anyway. Starts off with this really stupid cutscene of Master Chief getting yelled at for asking for background info on the area. The gameplay is actually super fun though. You ride in this big mammoth giant car thing, and you can, you can get off it, you can stay on it. It's just really such a unique level. Then Master Chief talks to God or something? I don't even know. And then it ends really cool with Master Chief letting that annoying guy that yelled at him earlier know that nobody cares about him. I am ordering you. To surrender that AI! No, sir. Number 21 is House of Reckoning from Halo Infinite. This level makes me wonder why people don't like this game. Everything about this level is just so fun. The three different tests that the brute bad guy gives you, and just the fight at the end with the brute bad guy himself, who, by the way, I just want to say, the brute bad guy, who I don't even know the name of, spends the entire game talking about the other bad guy, Atriox, that just, like, exploded in the beginning. To the point where I don't even know his name, but I know Atriox's name. Number 20 is Sierra117 from Halo 3. 
Jumping right back into the action in a forest area filled with Covenant is the perfect way to start the game, especially with both the Arbiter and Master Chief. Number 19 is Warship Grabakan from Halo Infinite. I knew I was gonna like Infinite right off the bat because of this level. This was easily my favorite level from Halo Infinite. The cutscenes are perfect, introducing Master Chief's amazing new armor that mixes all the armors from the games together. It is kind of weird, like I said earlier, that Atriox like destroys Master Chief. Like I've never seen him be that beat up and then just like disappears from the rest of the game because it kind of just made me want to fight him and not that other guy from that I don't even know the name of. And it really is just amazing cutscenes to start off the level. Like the one where he's fighting Atriox and he punches him a bunch of times and he gets thrown off the edge and stuff like that. When when the Echo Driver, whatever his name is, finds Chief in the space and that piano plays. Of course, that part where he says you've like one bullet versus an army. It's like cutscenes like this that like restore my faith in Halo games. Number 18 is the Pillar of Autumn from Halo Reach. Both Carter and Emil's deaths were extremely impactful and just being able to see the pillar of autumn again was awesome the interaction between noble six and keys will always give me chills get the hell out of here negative i have the gun good luck sir good luck to you Spider. and then ending it off with that big gun that shoots down the ships amazing level number 17 midnight from halo 4 i've learned that a lot of people don't like this level i am not one of those people I enjoyed the flying section a lot. I actually enjoyed some of the combat with the Prometheans just because it's like the end and I feel like it had to happen. And it is kind of weird that the Didact kind of just dies in a cutscene, but the rest of that cutscene is amazing. And it would mean so much more if Cortana stayed dead. The cutscene after with Lasky and Master Chief talking about how soldiers aren't machines is perfect to me as well. She said that to me once. About being a machine. The point of the game is that Cortana is a machine that acts like a human, and Master Chief is a human that acts like a machine. And I think this game and this cutscene really played that well. I didn't like a whole lot of things from Halo 4, but I really, really liked this level. It's also insane to me that a game that looks this good came out on the Xbox 360. Number 16 is the Ark from Halo 3. This level is really fun. You start off with a sniper and a warthog, and then you finish all the enemies in the area, and then forward until dawn lands with a bunch of tanks. After destroying a scarab and le learning about the Ark, there's this brute boss fight with a brute with a hammer, while like 10 other brutes like surround you cheering. It's awesome. Number 15 is the Maw from Halo Combat Evolved. This is the last level in Halo Combat Evolved, and is a great way to end it. A lot of levels in Halo Combat Evolved seem to be just old levels, but slightly different. This can kind of ruin them for me. Like, for example, Two Betrayals is just Assault on the Control Room backwards. Uh, Keys is just Truth and Reconciliation, but with the Flood. But I feel like this one makes a lot of sense being the same earlier, because it's, uh, it's the exact same thing as the Pillar of Autumn, except like the last boss fight and the car part. But I feel like... This one's okay because it reminds you of how far you came in the game, that being Pillar Autumn being his first level in the game. The final boss fight, if you can really even call it that, is tricky in a good way, whether you have a rocket launcher or just throwing grenades or something. But at the very end of the level, it's probably one of my favorite moments in Halo ever. The driving escape course thing is so fun. They recreate it in Halo 3, and I think they might do it a little better, but it's just so fun in this game. Uh, even though it doesn't make all that much sense why that there's just like an obstacle course on a ship, but it's fun. Number 14 is Assault on the Control Room from Halo Combat Evolved. I believe that this is the first level of Halo where you get to actually drive a tank, and it's very fun. This level has you doing so many different awesome things in so many different areas in so many different ways. Number 13 is Crow's Nest from Halo 3. This level isn't usually this high for Halo fans, but I really like it. Master Chief arriving at a military base filled with soldiers that have lost faith to just to regain it after seeing him is awesome. Running around basically saving an entire army is cool to me. 12 is the Storm from Halo 3. This level is just super fun. It's just one big firefight with loads of vehicles on both sides of the fight. The end cutscene is also absolutely amazing. This 
is the way the world ends. Also, fun fact, the only word that Master Chief ever says to the Arbiter in this entire game is... What is it? More brutes? Worse. Number 11, The Great Journey from Halo 2. This is the last level in Halo 2, ending it on a huge cliffhanger. Some people are really mad about the cliffhanger and the fact that the last level in the game you play as the Arbiter and not Master Chief. Which, like, I can understand being an issue like when the game first came out but to me it isn't at all now because i can easily just play halo 3 immediately after finishing it this level has you having to protect sergeant johnson who's driving a scarab which is awesome by the way in like any vehicle you want basically and then there's a big brute boss fight at the end and then of course master chief drops a fire one-liner master chief you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship Sir, finishing this fight. Now entering top 10, at number 10 we have Lone Wolf from Halo Reach. This is the last level in Halo Reach and the last Bungie level ever, which is kind of poetic. The game tells you exactly how it's going to end from the very beginning of the game. Though it's mostly a cutscene depending on how long you last, the feeling of seeing the glass of Noble Six's mask break letting me know the first time I played it that you couldn't win and the sadness coming over me was a perfect way to end it. Also, while we're at it, I looked it up and not enough people are talking about how Star Wars Rogue One is just a ripoff of Halo Reach. Number nine, Metropolis from Halo 2. This level is just super fun. Driving down a bridge on 2050-52 Earth in an unstoppable tank with waves of Covenant vehicles charging you that stand at absolutely no chance is awesome. And at the end where you take down the Scarab, it was like the coolest thing ever to play. Thanks for the tank. He never gets me anything. Oh, I know what the ladies like. Number 8, Mombasa Streets from Halo 3 ODST. This level was kind of a whole bunch of levels because the game keeps like coming back to it, but I just counted it as one. I love the loneliness of it. The rookie exploring the open world finding clues about his missing teammates was done really well, and the telephone booths that tell you a story that you can find all around the map made it really fun to explore. When I first played the Halo games, I was super honest, interested in Halo 3 ODST because of the fact that you don't even play as a Spartan. But I played it the, for the first time when I was replaying them all, and it kind of adds to it. You can't just run through enemies gun blazing because you're not Master Chief. And of course, this level has amazing jazz music. Number 7 is Cario Station from Halo 2. The level itself is just kind of the Pillar of Autumn level from Halo Combat Evolved, but bigger. But this level has the coolest cutscene from a video game I've ever seen in my life. This is the perfect way to start a video game. There are so many iconic moments in it. Master Chief, defend this station. Yes, sir. I need a weapon. Right this way. Sir, permission to leave the station. For what purpose, Master Chief? To give the Covenant back their bomb. Permission granted. I know what you're thinking. And it's crazy. So, stay here. Unfortunately for us both, I like crazy. Just one question. What if you miss? I won't. For a brick, he flew pretty good. Master Chief flying through space and explosions to return the Covenant bomb to their ship makes me wish that Halo got an actual good movie or show adaptation instead of that awful Peacock show it made last year. Number 6 is the silent cartographer from Halo to Combat Evolved. This is what would normally be picked as the favorite Halo level among fans, and though it isn't my favorite, it's still definitely one of the best. This level gives the player so much freedom. You can decide to activate the security override instead of going the long way when the elite closes the door. You can decide to drive into battle with soldiers instead of just walking. You can explore and find guns like the rocket launcher instead of just speeding through it. Or if you're like me, you can just drive in circles around the island a hundred times instead of progressing in the mission. Number five is Long Night of Solace from Halo Reach. This level is easily my favorite from Reach. It's so different from the rest of Halo. Not only is the name awesome, so is the gameplay. You go from a space battle with flawless gameplay to attacking the Covenant on foot in the Covenant ship. Also, the first of the Noble team dies in this, George. 
It hurts that George is barely in the game because I really liked his character. Number four, Halo from Halo 3. The last playable level in what probably should have been the last Master Chief game. This level perfectly ends the Halo trilogy. In this level, you finally shut up that stupid floating light bulb. It has this really depressing cutscene where Sergeant Johnson dies. Send me out. And driving to the ship just before the ring explodes. Just like in the very first Halo game. And all of this is happening while the amazing music blasts. If we don't make it, we'll make it. It's been an honor serving with you, John. Number three is Gravemind from Halo 2. Before I get into it, I would just like to say that I played this on normal difficulty, not legendary, because I'm not mentally insane. Everything about this level, on normal, is so perfect. The cutscene in the beginning where the Arbor and the Chief finally meet. Relax. I'd rather not piss this thing off. Demon. The Gravemind's weirdly amazing dialogue. This one is less human And has its mind concluded. This one is but flesh and faith. And is the more deluded. The Master Chief's iconic Boo. <laughs> And then right into combat, running through a war between elites and brutes with the amazing high charity backdrop is the coolest thing ever. Number 2, 343 Guilty Spark from Halo Combat Evolved. Surprisingly, a flood level is in my top 3 favorite Halo levels of all time. 343 Guilty Spark introduces a new type of enemy, the Flood, midway through the game. Throughout the next Flood levels the Halo games give, the Flood is turned into more of an annoyance than an enemy that is enjoyable to fight, but in 343 Guilty Spark it is executed perfectly. The level itself has a completely different feel compared to the rest of Halo. It changes to more of a horror tone. Everything from the camera footage Master Chief finds, to the part where the Flood spores pour out of the doors surrounding you, make me wish that Halo Combat Evolved Got a proper remaster instead of the 2011 one that makes everything look cartoonish. The level could be so much cooler if they just made it darker and made the flashlight a thing that you actually need instead of something that you can just like have on for no reason. Because of how much brighter they made everything in the remaster. I hope that one day the people that did the Halo 2 remaster, which by the way only came out 3 years after the Combat Evolved one, could do the Combat Evolved one again. And my favorite Halo level ever, from Halo 3, The Covenant. This level is absolutely everything you could want from a Halo game. You team up with the elites to fight both Flood and Covenant, both in vehicles and on foot. And then when you finally reach the towers where the Prophet of Truth has started to activate the rings, the Flood helps guide you through the Covenant to deactivate them. The Arbiter then kills Truth in the coolest way. I am Truth, the voice of the Covenant. You must be silenced. Which is really cool because I feel like he was kind of sidelined in this game. But after no longer needing them, Gravemind turns on them and you have to start fighting Flood. You trade one villain for another. Then in the end, it's revealed that the Ark created another ring to replace the one that was destroyed in Halo Combat Involved. And all this happens while the greatest soundtrack of all time plays. It's perfect.